Hey guys, Tucket here, and for this Patreon review, this is kind of like a modified version of everything. So my friend Richard was like, hey, Taki, I'd really love to do a slam skull. I don't really know what I'm going to do. So this is just going to be like my melee template that you use, and you just tweak slightly based on what you want to play. So uh, I took this from my friend Sev. He was planning out a perforate gladiator. I think perforate is going to be really legit, by the way, and just for the record... If I was to league start as melee, I would league start as glad with either perforate or blade storm. I think the warcry stuff is really strong. I would go full warcry, but I would go perforate or blade storm. I wouldn't really go for the other abilities. Not because I think they'll be bad, just because I think blade storm and perforate will be really, really strong. We don't know exactly how it works, but I think blade storm might like snapshot with the tornadoes. So you just like, you roll your hand across all the war cries. So you get the super strong um, war cry exerted buffed attacks. Then you just do a big swing. And you just have this fat tornado just destroying everything. So I'll kind of explain my thought process for this tree. Obviously the skills, the items, whatever completely changes based on like what kind of setup you're going for. And then I'll kind of talk about how you'd like navigate certain ways based on like if you went earthquake, if you went tectonic. If you went perforate, if you went blade storm, and then talk through some like ascendancy, ascendancy options and so forth. So first off, I want to talk about Impaler. So my first initial review of Impaler was, oh, Impaler seems pretty good. I then thought about it. I then sat and listened to people who play a lot of melee, and I realized Impaler is actually kind of dead. And I'm going to explain why. So the thought process of Impaler is that you're a big, slow-hitting attack. And you attack once, and you impale everything, then there's a cooldown, then you impale again. So, why is this bad? Right. When your hits impale enemies, also impale other enemies near them. Inflict four additional impales on enemies you impale. Enemies cannot be impaled for four seconds after you impale them. Now, a lot of people are going to be going Earthquake. If you go Earthquake, impale's really awkward, because with Earthquake, you have a small hit, and then your aftershock is the big hit. So if you're playing an earthquake build, your small hit does small impale and then puts the aftershock on cooldown. So that's really awkward. If you use any movement skill that isn't dash and your movement skill hits the enemy, you then put a weak impale on the enemy. So if you were to like leap slam, for example, you screwed yourself. Um, if you were to vigilant strike on... I mean, <laughs> these builds use Fortify main links, but like, pretend that you use Vision Strike. Basically, any kind of weird utility setup you use up, any movement skill you set up, if you just roll unlucky with your damage rolls, you just kind of screw yourself. Um, it's just kind of awkward. There's also a lot of skills which would be really good with it. So, for example, something like Tectonic would be really good because it's just a consistent damage and everything, but that does conversion. Also, Fist of War, Ruthless, they have anti-synergy with Impale. So with Fist of War, it's like you have these big empowered attacks. With Ruthless, you've got these big empowered attacks. But if you hit with a normal hit, then afterwards your Fist of War goes off when your stuff's on cooldown. It just kind of, just kind of screws with it. I'm not saying it's going to be impossible to play with. And it might be worth just as one point on a build that doesn't really invest into Impale. But yeah, it's it's an odd choice. It's an odd choice. So that's the first thing that I want to talk about. Second thing I want to talk about. Um, war cries. Why war cries are good. Why war cries are bad. Call to arms when you should and shouldn't take call to arms. So call to arms makes your war cries instant and your war cries share a cooldown. The base cast time is 0.8 seconds call to arms isn't for war cry builds call to arms is for non war cry builds who are in this part of the skill tree who just want like instant enduring cries or instant infernal cries you don't want this on your build if you're going for like a melee build and you want to be using war cries to buff yourself you want to get as much war cry speed as possible and you kind of want to treat them like flasks. So the way you should think about it is kind of like you just roll your hand over your flask, over your war cries. One, two, three. And you have this ridiculously empowered attack that just absolutely destroys enemies. That's who you kind of want to build around it. 
So, with that in mind, what are the important clusters? What could you get away with dropping? What do you need? What is kind of like you feel it out? So, the main thing you want to look for is Warcry speed to get that car speed as low as possible. And then cooldown recovery. Um, and second wind. And also, this is the most important thing. That like Warcry thing I told you, you go like one, two, three. You don't do that every pack. If you're going Warcry, one, two, three, right click on every single pack of mobs, you're going to have a bad time. You do the one, two, three Warcry when you see rares, when you see bosses, when you see like league mechanics. You kind of need to think of it if, like pretend you're playing Divine Eye, right? If you've ever played Divine Eye or any channeled ability, you can full charge like every single white mob, but you don't need to full charge every single white mob. So a lot of it's just going to be like learning about when you go for it. So yeah. These are the kind of things you want to think about. So what would, the, what would be the main clusters I'd recommend going for? What are the ones I'd recommend dropping? So Deep Breath is very strong because it gives 54% uh, cooldown recovery speed, which is a lot of cooldown recovery speed, and also gives increased total power counted by war cries. Uh, the AoE is nice, but not that important in my opinion, and it's a little bit out of the way. I think this is the cluster that you take early and you then later drop to anoint. I think this is the one you anoint because it's just in a weird part of the tree and then the others you root through naturally. So I would say take this early, then probably drop it and just anoint this too. Sure, you will miss out on 24% cooldown, but I think you'll be okay. Now getting into this wheel. So this one gives you 12% uh, cooldown, which is very strong for one point. Uh, this gives you the war cry speed though, and the speed's more important than the cooldown because again, as I said... You don't want to be using it every single pack. You don't want to be using it on, like, choice encounters. Um, and I think of, think of it also kind of like... Okay, so pretend you're, like, fighting Cirrus or someone. So for someone like Cirrus, there are phases where you can't do damage. So that's when you then use your war cries. So if you can just stand in front of the boss and just hit it, you just stand in front of the boss and hit it. It's when you then have to, like, back out. That's when you, like, you fully charge your juice and then you go in. A lot of this place I'll be kind of like, oh, before you enter the boss room, rotate full war cries, walk into the boss room, use your exerted attacks, and then you can war cry again. Boom, boom, boom. If you've ever played like World of Warcraft, think of it like pre-potting. So you kind of need to think about the war cries as like pre-potting, and you only use it when you really need it. So Escalation also further leans into this like rotating through a bunch of war cries thing. This gives you 20% increased damage for each time you've war cried recently. So you just go like roll your hand across. If you've used three war cries, like 60% increased damage. Great. Um, natural authority. Natural authority is really strong. So it's enemies taught by your war cries take 5% increased damage. There's not that many multipliers like this um, for traditional fizz builds, which is pretty good. And then debilitate is just a nice little debuff. So really solid. And then this wheel is really good for speed. So this wheel has the most speed. This wheel's got the most cooldown. This buffs you. This debuffs enemies. So that's kind of how you, th you think about it. So if you're like, I've got enough speed or I've got the instant node, then you don't need any of this stuff. Um, so this is really nice because of the speed. And it also has remove an ailment when you war cry. Um, I wouldn't really rely on this, but it's just kind of like nice gravy. The fact that every now and again it will remove ignite, so it will remove shocks. Um, you're definitely still going to need the freeze removal. Like, don't have this and not have ailment immunity on your build. But it's like, this means that you could... Ignite is a very good example. Uh, there are some very scary ignites in the game. But generally, most builds don't really notice ignite that much. So this is where it's nice. Where it's like, if you have that random thing, great for ignite, great for bleed. Poison's another really good example. You know, the ones where it's kind of like, I'd say Poison Ignite are the main two, because you always have Bleed Immunity on your flask, you always have Freeze Immunity on your flasks. You should have Shock, but maybe you could drop Shock for this. So I think it's really strong. So with that massive, like, spiel out of the way, let's talk about some other choice clusters you should definitely pick up based on your skill gem, and then I'll talk through some of the Ascendancy stuff. So if you're playing Earthquake, 100%, you're taking Window of Opportunity. Like, you just, you're, you're doing it. It gives you the reduced skill effect duration. This is how you get the faster earthquake explosions. The annoying-ish thing about it um, is the reduced skill effect duration will make your Enduring Cry last for less. And Enduring Cry recharge is really strong, but it's worth it. So that's where you're going for this way. If you're going Tectonic, or if you're going, for example, 
Earthquake Chieftain, you can actually make any pure Fizz skill work on Chieftain because of these nodes have been buffed. So this node gives you 20% uh, Fizz converted to Fire, and this node gives you 20% of Fizz converted to Fire. So if you take these, you've got 40% just flat, and then you've got 50% from your Ascendancy, and then you can craft uh, on gloves 20%. Um, 25, I believe. There's also incursion gloves that give 25. So if you want to go like pure fire earthquake, you can do it. And the reason why you might want to maybe take a non-fire Ascendancy and go Chieftain is because of um, Tawana. So this is a really cool node. So this triggers, uh, Tawana is chosen when you attack with a slam skill near an enemy. This is a two second cooldown. And uh, it basically just copies your attack. So when you slam, it slams. This has some of the issues I was talking about before, though, with the impale thing. This isn't that great if you're going for, like, the super powerful, like, Fist of Wars or the Ruthless kind of stuff. Because you want this to proc on your empowered hits. And again, this will feel really bad with the Leap Slam. Leap Slam's in a really weird spot because they've made Leap Slam a slam ability. I mean, it's got slam in the name. But it, like, Leap Slam will eat up your exerted charges from your war cries. It will eat up this. There's been a lot of feedback saying this is bad. So hopefully GGG takes that on board and goes, yeah, maybe that isn't that strong. So this is kind of like the main draw of doing Chieftain. Um, yeah. Also worth mentioning Valico. Valico is very easy uptime with uh, Tectonic Slam. Because it's like Tectonic Slam will use up one Endurance Charge every three hits. So this will always be active. Immortal Call is another way of doing it. And you're like, well, how do you generate your Endurance Charges? It's got Endurance Charge and Generation on Kill on the small one. And also, you'll be using Enduring Cry in these builds. Because Enduring Cry is really strong now. Berserker. Berserker is a bit of a weird ascendancy. It's potentially very powerful. But it's kind of at odds with itself. So a lot of these abilities are just been going RT. They've nerfed Crit a bit. Crit is still very strong. But if you're going heavy on the Warcry stuff, you just don't have that many points to spend on like all the war cries, all the crit. You just can't fit everything into one build. So you've kind of got like this crit path, you've got this rage path, you've got this random leech 2.0, then you've got damage, which everyone just takes aspect of carnage, and then you've got this warbringer node. So warbringer is potentially really strong or really weak, depending on how the timing of this particular interaction works. So war cries grant five rage per five power, and power is... When you war cry, it counts on the enemies are nearby, and if they're rares or uniques, they're worth more power. And then based on the amount of power, so the based on the amount of enemies nearby, your war cry is stronger. So based on the amount of power, the more rage you generate, so you generate a bunch of rage if you have less than 25. And then war cry is sacrifice 25 if you have at least 25. So the way the wording on this is kind of awkward. And this could be, be me not understanding this, but I had this conversation with Noogie, and Noogie's like planning on slamming for League Star. And he had he said this to me. It's like, depending on how this works, this could be really bad. So let's say you go into the fight and you want to roll your hand. So you do your three war cries to empower your big attack. If it spends it, then generates, it's good. So if you had like 50, it spends and then it generates. So you go back up to 50. Great. If you generate first, spends after, it's terrible. So if you're at 50, the generated is wasted. You then spend, so you then go down. So then you'll always kind of be dipping down rather than dipping up. And you want to be above 25 rage, because being above 25 rage gives you the stun immunity. And you want to have a lot of rage, because the rage gives you the attack buffs. And it's kind of this awkward scenario if you can never be on the top ends of your rage generation because the war cries only empower your next couple of attacks so if they only empower like your next four attacks then you're never going to be attacking based on like having full rage but giving two percent more damage is is huge so it's 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 kind of weird it's kind of weird um 50 more and 40 percent more this like multiplies on itself so I, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it seems seems a bit weird to me. Seems a bit weird. Um, you won't generate at fifty because you need to generate less. Well, yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. If you're at, if you're at, if it spends then generates, 
Because, yeah, if you're at 50, okay, if you're only, if you're, okay, well, the new cap is 60 with Berserking and 65 if you take Hatchet Master. So if you're at 60, so if you're capped, so if you're on 60, like, boom, then you won't, if it does the first line first, then you won't generate anything because you're above. And if you're above 60, then it just sacrifices the Rage. So it just sacrifices the Rage, so you go down to 35 if you're on 60. And you gain the Empower. So then you're at 35. So you war cry again. You don't generate. So then you go down to 10. So you started at 60. You've war cried twice. You've gone down to 10. And you've got like three war cry suits. Then you war cry again. You go back to 35. It it just seems kind of at odds with itself. It seems kind of weird. And there's like, there's weird. It's strong. But it's, yeah, it seems, mm, it seems kind of at odds with itself. Jug is just safe as a pick. Because Jug just makes you tanky. And this is also kind of one like, well, just go glad. Like, go glad, go champion. Like, there's nice things in here. You can go just tra traditional impale. Um, or you can just go glad. So you go glad, you get the challenger charges, which makes your character feel really strong. Feels good. You get the bleed explosions. Feels good. You get the Frenzy Charge generation, which gives you 10% more Fizz damage while maximum Frenzy Charges. And you get the reduced Physical Damage while maximum Endurance Charges. And you'll always be at max Endurance Charges because you're constantly spamming your uh, Enduring Cry. I don't know. I think Julis seems stronger to me. This stuff could be really good. And Chieftain's definitely going to be very strong. But this, to me, seems kind of at odds. Um, so, yes. So, if you're going Fire Conversion, take up these nodes. If you're going Earthquake, you want to take up these nodes. If you're doing the Perforate stuff, the Blade Storm stuff, uh, this cost is very cool. Um, so it gives you increased damage while in Blood Stance, increased AoE while in Sand Stance. This mini node, you don't need the cooldown recovery because no one's going to be like smashing that button. Um, this node gives you Attack Seed if you've changed stance recently, increased damage, increased AoE. So basically for three points, you're getting 25% AoE and you're getting... Um, 45% increased damage. So if you're single targeting, getting 45% increased. And if you're AoE and getting 25 AoE, obviously really strong for perforate because with perforate, you'll be wanna be, they're trying to push you juggling with perforate because you get extra spikes if you stop between them recently. I think Axe is generally the way to go. And it's also very nice that it is next to Hatchet Master, which gives you the increased rage and the, you lose rage slower. Um, So yeah. This is the base tree I would recommend for two-hand axes. Again, my skill recommendations would be Blade Storm and Perforate going as Glad. I think that'd be very, very strong. The Zerka stuff, I'm not entirely sold on. We've got to see what's like in practice. The Chieftain, very strong. Bit boring, bit niche. And then the Jug will always consistently be very good. Um, another thing that's worth considering, uh, Slayer might make a bit of a comeback, potentially, because there's so much increased uh, total recovery available on the tree now. And another thing that you can do um, is you can Soul Tether um, for the Slayer Leech kind of effect. And you can just, I'm pretty sure you can just go Eternal Youth, Soul Tether, and it's always active. Um, the other thing which is nice about Eternal Youth is Eternal Youth gives you life recharge on, like, Volpact builds. So you could go, like, Volpact Slayer, and even though it, like, reduces um, your recovery, there's so much recovery scaling now that it doesn't matter, and you still have that regen for stuff like, I don't know, Lab Traps or whatever. So, yes. This is the PUB. Don't take the uh, items too seriously. Don't take the skills too seriously because, you know, this is planner and whatever. And if you're doing this as duelist, then you're going to have to skim off some nodes. I'll be the first to skim off those nodes. Go boom, 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 boom. Swap over to duelist. Drop that point. And then you go glad. Boom, boom, boom. And then if you're going the perforate stuff, fill in versatile combatant and hatchmaster. But anyway. I'm Taki. Have a good day. Best of luck with your Warcry builds, by the way. Bye-bye.